Good morning and welcome to worship on this last Sunday of September. It is so good to be together. Let us begin with our call to worship. Whose story is this? This story is God's alone to tell. It hums in the rivers and the trees. It whispers in the skies and the seas. It calls to the people of all places. It speaks in our hearts, in our lives. Why then should we speak of this story? This story calls our name in creation. This story claims our lives through the cross. This story shapes our future through the spirit. We are the story in this time and this place. of grace you call, call us, us to, to be, be different, different from, from the world, world but, but the, the world, world is seductive and, and so we come, come here to be strengthened god of vision you hold before us an alternate way of life, life different priorities different loyalties different values but, but we know that, that the world is not only seductive but powerful and so, so we are drawn in to following its priorities, accepting its values, showing loyalty to its gods. God, who blesses the meek, the peacemakers, and the merciful, forgive us when we lose sight of these qualities, when we misunderstand their role in the world. Dear friends, rejoice and be glad. God is gracious and God offers blessings. God calls us to life in the world. God offers us the chance to explore how to live out God's vision. We are called. We are forgiven. We are blessed. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. God of grace, you created us with the compassion and grace with the ability to work and the need to rest 
Yet we know too well that life is full of busyness and distractions. Help us to unplug and place our focus on you. In your son's name, amen. Well, friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, I don't know about you, but sometimes it's easy to kind of let our mind wander. And, and, and sometimes we find it kind of hard to focus. Do you ever feel that way? Well, I, I know that if you've been here at church on a Sunday morning, um, I can tell when people are sort of wandering. You know, the, the little looks that go all these different directions. Here's probably the best one. The best thing that happens is if there's a baby that cries during the service. You'd be surprised how many of you, if you're here, turn your heads away from the message and to the cry of the baby. I tell the people in our Bible study, in the Pericope Bible study, that uh, you never have to worry about, uh, when I preach, the baby winning. I will always get louder than the baby. So you all don't need to turn your heads to where the baby is. Just keep your focus where I am. I joked uh, this week with them that, you know, I, I, I'm tempted to, uh, when that happens and everybody's heads turn and they're looking back there, I'm tempted just to keep repeating my phrase over and over and over again until one of those heads turns to a hand saying, Pastor, you know you just said that? Then I know I've got you back. Then I know you're listening. No, it's easy for us to find ourselves distracted because our world is filled with distractions. It, it, it really thrives on trying to get us to look at all these other things. And that can be a problem because God knows what happens with distractions. God invites us then. This is the invitation this week. God invites us to always move away from that. God's inviting us to let go of the distractions because God knows that distractions oftentimes lead to our destruction. We miss the point or we miss the turn or whatever it is. Distractions tend to cause more problems than what we really need. So where does distraction come from? Well, I don't know if you know this or not, but the, the word distraction, it actually comes from a Latin word. And this is what it means. Pulling apart. Have you ever thought about a distraction being something that pulls apart? Pulling apart, separating, a drawing of the mind in different directions. Think about those three understandings of distractions for a moment. And all the forces that we deal with in the world. Isn't it a reality for us sometimes to feel like we're being pulled apart when we see all the things that are happening within our world and our culture and our society? I mean, that's really what a distraction is. You know, there's a saying that we often hear is that the devil is out to destroy us. you got to be afraid of the devil trying to destroy you. Well, you know what, friends? No. The devil doesn't need to destroy us. All the devil has to do is distract us. The devil's got a really easy job in our world. Just fill the world with one distraction after another. And the devil can get us to shift our minds away from the faith, to shift our focus away from God. And then what happens? Pretty soon the devil's got free reign over working on our hearts and our minds and our lives. No, the devil doesn't have to destroy. The devil just needs to distract. There's a Bible story in the, in the gospel. It's a story of Jesus and his disciples getting an invitation to go to the home of two sisters and a brother. It's the very first time in scripture that we're introduced to Martha and Mary and their brother Lazarus. 
Now, more than likely, how this would have happened is Lazarus would have given the invitation to Jesus and his disciples to come to his house where, he would be, where they would be fed and they'd be able to teach. And what would likely have happened was in the space where Jesus was, was speaking, the room would be filled with the disciples and probably men, except in this story. This story, we are introduced to Martha, who is opening up the, the way the writer of Luke writes it, says, Martha welcomed Jesus. More than likely what he means is that Martha was the one doing the preparation. Martha was the one working on the meal, preparing everything. Martha has her sister, Mary. Mary probably got up and was helping with the preparation too. They were off to the side, away from the room, but one of the sisters began to hear. One of the sisters gets distracted from their work in order to listen to Jesus. And what she hears coming out of the mouth of Jesus makes her do something that nobody could have imagined. Mary leaves the area where she has been working with Martha and goes into that space with all the men and gets all the way up to the feet of Jesus where she sits down and listens. She's listening to everything that's coming from Christ. Well, when Martha finds out about this, Martha is upset. And she goes into the room, and instead of going up to Mary and saying, what are you doing? Get back here and help me. She goes to Jesus and says to Jesus, Lord, tell her to get up and come help me. This was Jesus' response. Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things, but few things are needed. Indeed, only one. He goes on to say that Mary had made the choice. Mary understood what is really the only thing that is needed, and that is knowing the word, knowing Christ as Lord and Messiah, listening to that teaching, so that she could live that life. I like how somehow Jesus makes that connection, right? That connection about how our distractions lead to worry. Because Jesus understood that we are distracted by so many things, but in reality, in all of those distractions, there's only a few things that in our life that truly, really what are the things in your life that matter to you most? And how often do you get distracted from making sure those are the things that matter most? Distractions often lead to worries. And where does worry get us? Where does worry get us? Does it get us any more time? Does it get us any more further along in whatever process we're dealing with? No. Worries just hold us. Worries cause us, cause us to keep getting more and more anxious. So I couldn't resist. I was thinking about that. We have wisdom when it comes to worry from this guy, right? You all know his song. Don't worry. Be happy. Now that sounds really simple, I know. But you know what? I think actually Jesus is saying it's really that simple. I think God is actually laying in front of us the simple way of living our life so that we can actually not worry, but be happy. So how does, how does that work? Well, I think we got to think about the choices we get to make when it comes to our distractions I think sometimes we always think that distractions or, or these decisions that we have to make from distractions are always a choice between what is good and what is bad. When we're not filled with the negative distractions, this is actually what happens. 
we're able to see things and we're able to choose from what is good to what is better. And sometimes we get to choose from what is good to what really matters in our life when we live distraction free, when we live that happy life. So how does God invite us to let go of these distractions? Like I said, if it really is this simple, is it, if that's really how God wants us to live, how is it that we're supposed to do it? Well, he starts with this. Diminish the distractions. Don't place yourself in places in which you can be easily distracted. Think of all the things that distract you. How many of those could be eliminated if you choose to not be engaging in those distractions? In the book of 1 Corinthians, we hear the writer say this, I'm saying this for your benefit. I want you to do whatever will help you serve the Lord best with as few distractions as possible. Do you hear it? What happens with distractions? They get in the way for us to do what it is that God calls us to do. Distractions come in so many different forms today. And friends, I'm going to tell you honestly, there are going to be even more distractions before they ever get less. That's just the way our world is. How long do you stare at your cell phone during the day? How long are you on social media? How long are you flipping through pages? That, when you're at home, if you're a married couple at home, do you sit on the couch together and you go through your phone? Do you go to bed holding on to your cell phone? Do you see it? That's what happens. Distractions are so easy for us. And God says, I want you to have the happy life. So here's the rule number one. Get rid of your distractions. Start to limit the things that make you distracted. Now, here's the second thing. God says, you want that happy life? Focus on what's important. Focus on the things that bring you life, bring you joy. The wisdom of the book of Proverbs comes to mind here. Proverbs 4, set your gaze on the path before you with fixed purpose, looking straight ahead and doing what? Ignoring life's distractions. Can you imagine how many times the Bible would be using the word ignoring life's distractions if back then they had all the distractions we have today? Look at how important it was back in the day in which we always say life was simpler then. Well, life is more complicated, but the message is still the same. The scripture, God, Christ calls us to limit ourselves from life's distractions. This is what we need to do. This is how we find that happiness, that happy life that is that simple that God says. When we're able to accomplish one and two, then we can turn to this. Listen to the voice of God. If you're saying, Pastor Mike, you know what, I don't know if I've ever heard God. I don't know if I've ever experienced a nudge from God. My answer to you is, how distracted are you? How many things are going on in your life right now that are drawing you away from where God is and has always been? How many things are you thinking about so that you don't hear? And this is what you miss. From the book of Isaiah, this is the way. This is what God says to you. Friend, this is the way. Walk in it. And when you're walking in it, when you're into God's word, then you know what's going to happen? You're going to hear it. You're going to hear what it is that God calls for you. I like this from the book of Matthew. The writer, it's Jesus speaking, and Jesus says this, and it's such wonderful, wonderful advice. 
Therefore, I tell you, Jesus says, do not worry about your life. He's here. Here's worry again. So he's talking to people who are what? People who are distracted. Don't worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, or what your, bod or what your body will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more value than they? And which of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your span of life? While the song is catchy and cute, it's also very profound, isn't it? What's Jesus saying? Don't worry. Be happy. Find your happiness in me. Find your happiness in what it is that matters most. So this, I think, is what we want to say for ourselves this week. Last week I gave you a prayer to help you with, um, with how to get through things, how to be able to see things more clearly. This week, how about we use these words? God, help us choose what's better. God, help us focus on what matters most. All of those things, they don't live in the distractions. It's all of, the, all of this that the distractions of our world are trying to take us away from. But not this week. And not for you. This week, each day, you will get up with this focus. Help me choose what's better today, God. Help me focus on what matters most. And friends, if that's what you do, I believe this is what you'll see. You're going to see your spouse in a whole different way. You're going to find smiles on your face when you watch your children at play. You'll enjoy time at work and time with friends even more. Because it is that simple. Once we move away from the distractions, once we conquer them, we don't have any worries, and we're left with just being happy. Amen. My faith looks up to Thee, the Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine, now me.
pleasant dreams when death's cold solemn stream shall be Less Savior than in love, fear and distrust remove. Let us confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. earth. I, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ God's, God's only Son, Son, our Lord, who was, who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered, suffered under Pontius, Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, died, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray for the world, the church, and all those in need. Almighty God, you created human beings to connect with one another in loving and meaningful ways. Yet our world is torn apart by war and greed. Grant wisdom to the leaders of all nations to promote justice, equality, and peace for all people. Today we pray especially for the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Creator God, the earth is experiencing all kinds of changes. We pray especially for the people in the path of Hurricane Fiona, especially Puerto Rico. And we pray for the needed hands and financial gifts to help the many people who are displaced. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. Healing God, we pray for all who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, for the homeless, the hospitalized, and homebound. We pray for those who are hungry, lonely, and we pray for those on our First Lutheran Church prayer list, and dear Lord, the needs are many. We lay our cares and our concerns before you now within our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Faithful God, you created us to live happy lives, but we are distracted by so many things which cause us, causes us to worry about many things and it causes us to miss out on living life to the fullest. Help us to hear your words. Help us to choose what is best for us and our families. Help us to be calmed and to know how you really want us to live. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. And long ago, dear God, your son taught us to pray, Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor 
and to give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, may you have a wonderful week, and remember that you are the church wherever you may be, so go in love and peace to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.